Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. In yesterday's World of Warships video, I apparently ruffled a few feathers by having a go at some of the less gifted members of the World of Warships community, particularly idiots in battleships who insist on driving in straight lines when every indicator in the world is telling them that they need to start turning because there are destroyers or cruisers on with torpedoes nearby, and yet they never seem to. Now, I wasn't having a go at battleship drivers. I'm not sitting here saying that all battleship drivers are idiots. But it's a lot easier to hide your stupidity when you're in a destroyer, for example, <laughs> because you react so much faster to changing events than somebody in a big, slow, lumbering battleship. And so, in the spirit of equality, I felt it was only fair to redress the issue in today's video. Today's story begins with the Minikaze class destroyer, the Japanese Tier 5, which back in the close beta was the most popular ship in World of Warships. More people sank more tonnage of ships with the Minikaze than any other ship in the game. It was just a teeny little bit overpowered. What you're about to see are some selected highlights from the very first game that I played in the Minikaze on the live server since the closed beta ended. I played the Minikaze during the closed beta, but I've only just unlocked this ship once again in the open beta, and I unlocked it on the day patch 0.4.1 went live. And what that means is that the Minikaze has had a little bit of rebalancing. It's had a little bit of buffing, and it's had a little bit of nerfing. Um, and the nerfs don't really bother me, and I'll explain why when we come to cover them, but the buffs... This ship used to have a turret rotation speed of 45 seconds. Uh, there are battleships in the game that turn their turrets faster than the Minikaze used to. Well, that's been significantly buffed. Now it only takes 30 seconds to rotate the turrets 180 degrees. Now, that's still pretty terrible, but it's significantly better than it was. It means that if you have to use the guns, the guns are at least usable. They're not particularly good, but you can at least use them. Now, the nerf to the Minikaze is in the area of its torpedoes. The Minikaze used to get two different sets of torpedoes. The stock torpedoes were very fast. They'd reach a speed of 68 knots, the Type 92 torpedoes, but they only had a range of 7 kilometers. Now, these were actually my preferred torpedoes on the Minikaze because I was used to driving American destroyers, and having torpedoes that can be launched at a range of 7 kilometers is just unheard of in American destroyers, at least until you get up to Tier 8, 9, and 10. And so I was quite satisfied with the 7km range on the Minikaze's stock torpedoes, and I particularly liked the speed of 68 knots, which meant that since you were launching them from closer in, and they were going so much faster, there was much less chance of your enemy dodging the torpedoes that you fired at them. The upgraded torpedoes in the Minikaze were significantly slower, but they had a range of 10 kilometers. and when you take into account the fact that this ship has a surface detection range of 6.2 kilometers and you can launch your torpedoes from 10 kilometers away, people almost never saw the Minikaze that killed them, if the Minikaze captain knew what he was doing. Well, that's a thing of the past. The Minikaze now no longer has a torpedo upgrade. The stock Type 92s with a 7 kilometer range and the 68 knot speed are the only torpedoes available on this ship today. So, armed with the stock torpedoes, because that's all you have, and with the only upgrade being the hull upgrade, which gives me a little bit more health, I'm here on the ocean map in my very first Minikaze game, scouting for enemy ships, and I've been spotted, and bang, there it is. An enemy destroyer. In fact, it's an enemy Minikaze. So I immediately start taking evasive action. I'm not going to hang around and try to get a firing solution over the starboard side of the ship against that enemy Minikaze when this kind of barrage of gunfire is coming in towards me. Instead, I turn around, ready the torpedoes on the other side, drop smoke, Keep my speed up, because the smoke screen is being laid right behind me, and I have no idea where that Minikaze is. I know he's in range, I know he's heading that rough direction, I put three spreads of torpedoes in the water on a wide spread to maximise my chances of hitting something, and I just get the hell out of there. Now, what does any of this have to do with making it up to the battleship drivers that took so much stick for sailing into torpedoes yesterday? Well, battleships are slow to manoeuvre. Unlike destroyers. Uh, <laughs> if, if a battleship eats the occasional torpedo, it's to be expected. It's going to happen at some point. That's why battleships get the ability to repair any damage that they've taken. But if you're in a destroyer... <laughs> and you're getting sunk by torpedoes fired from a ship that couldn't even see you, 
and instead just aimed in your general direction <laughs> and prayed that you were dumb enough to keep sailing in a straight line. Hang your head in shame. Okay, so once is a fluke. Do you think we can do it twice? I've just uh, hit and disabled that Nicholas-class destroyer over there, the American Tier 5. Now, if he continues sailing in a straight line and immediately repairs his engine to build up speed again, it doesn't really matter whether he's popped his smoke generator so that I can't actually see him. The torpedoes don't need to see him to hit him. What do you think? Yep, there we go. <laughs> Battleship drivers, are you feeling any better now? It's not just you. As I've just proven not once but twice in the opening minutes of this match on the ocean map, everybody assumes that if they can't see the torpedoes in the water, then the destroyer who is easily inside torpedo launch range can't possibly have fired any torpedoes at you, correct? Yeah. Yep, it's not just the battleships. Obviously, battleships suffer from it a heck of a lot more than anybody else because they're so much bigger and easier to see. But destroyers are just as guilty. And it's even more embarrassing when a destroyer gets torpedoed from long range because they really have absolutely no excuse. They know better than any other class of ship in the game just how dangerous torpedoes are and how easy it is to hit somebody and sink them if that person continues sailing in straight lines. Incidentally, and I was very, very surprised when I saw the post-battle results screen of this match because from this point on, I never scored another point of damage on a single enemy ship. Those couple of torpedo hits and that one single gun hit are the only damage that I did throughout the entire course of this match. But I stayed up front and I kept spotting enemy ships and my team pummeled the crap out of them. And I was very, very surprised to find that after only doing 20,000 damage and doing all of that in the first three minutes of the match, I finished top on experience earned, and it was all through the spotting damage. Well, anyway, moving along swiftly, what we have next for you is a little match I played the other day in the USS Clemson. This is the American Tier 4 destroyer, and it's a cracking little ship. It's not too good at first, but fully upgraded, it's got a pretty impressive punch in its gun batteries. The torpedoes, of course, are completely hopeless because it's an American destroyer. Americans don't really start getting decent torpedo armaments until the USS Benson at Tier 8. Um, pretty much up until that point, these little things are gunboats. Now, that doesn't mean you can't sink things with your torpedoes when you're in an American destroyer. Of course you can. You just have to hope that the enemy are dumb enough to let you get within the typically 5.5 kilometers that you need to be in order to hit anything with an American torpedo. And as we've amply proven time and time again, not just today, not just yesterday, but in just about every World of Warship video that I upload, the one thing that you can count on is that the enemy are going to be dumb enough to let you get within five and a half kilometres when you're in an American destroyer, and you're going to get some kills with your torpedoes. Typically, you do have to be a lot more sneaky in an American destroyer than a Japanese destroyer, because American destroyers can be spotted from further away, as well as having torpedoes with the much, much shorter range. It doesn't really seem fair somehow, does it? And yet... I do seem to do all right in my Clemson. I've been playing this ship quite a lot lately because I'm trying to get my hands on the Nicholas again. Nicholas being obviously the American Tier 5 destroyer and another great little gunboat. I do have to admit though, um, not that I've been keeping score or anything, but what I seem to feast on the most when I'm sailing an American destroyer are Japanese destroyers. Because if there is one thing that American destroyers are very, very good at, it's going after and killing other destroyers, particularly the Japanese ones, because the Japanese destroyers don't really tend to have very good guns. It's not that the guns don't do a lot of damage, they typically tend to be higher calibre guns than the American destroyers, and they do more damage when they hit, but they don't have as many of them, and they turn far too slowly to be able to accurately fire at an American destroyer when you're engaged in a close-range knife fight. And that, conveniently enough, brings us onto the first incident in this particular replay, as I'm attempting to do an end run all the way around the top corner of the map and try and get within attack range of the enemy aircraft carriers. I'm going to run into an enemy destroyer, and he's going to put paid to my carefully laid plan. I'm going to end up in exactly the kind of situation that you do not want to be in when you're in an American destroyer, getting into a close-range knife fight with another American destroyer. And once I'm done with him, we're going to have some fun with a big, dumb, stupid battleship, because that never gets old. And that's the battleship, actually. The Miyogi over there. Hello! Wave to the camera. There he is. We're going to see more of him later. 
So I've spotted a couple of enemy battleships, a Miyogi and an Arkansas Beater, and then I get lit up, and it can only be another destroyer, and there he is. It's the USS Wix. That's the American Tier 3, and it's not a bad little ship. I turn, he gets the first salvo off, and he draws first blood. It's minor damage, I can live with that. I drop the smoke screen, I'm still going at full speed, but I've turned and I've laid smoke directly behind me, and I'm steaming directly away from the smoke screen, so I don't have to slow down to stay inside the smoke screen, because the smoke screen has been laid in clouds right behind me. I am no longer detected. I'm even managing to fire through the smoke screen at that guy while he's still visible before he also takes advantage of the smoke screen, fire a couple of blind shots, hit, incapacitate him, knock his steering out. I know he has therefore just used his damage control ability, and it's going to be on cooldown. Now, he's still being spotted by that battleship behind me, so I'm able to maintain a targeting solution on him with my torpedoes. And as we've amply demonstrated, it's not just battleships that continue to drive in straight lines when they know there are destroyers waiting around corners for them. So here he comes, narrow spread, widespread, just in case he turns at the last moment. I need to watch out, there are some torpedo bombers up there. Nine times out of ten, if you're playing World of Warships and you assume that the person you're engaging is a complete idiot, you will be proven right. This guy is not actually a complete idiot. He does make a big mistake, but running into these torpedoes is not the mistake. There you go. He anticipated that there were going to be torpedoes in the water. He changed course and speed, and none of the torpedoes hit him. But my guns did. He's been incapacitated again, and he's on fire. He returns fire with his guns, because he's an American destroyer, and he knocks out one of my gun turrets temporarily, but I do still have two guns, well, actually four guns and two turrets that are capable of firing at him, and I keep up the barrage. His second salvo misses. This is where he makes his big mistake. He turns the ship around and stops firing at me. This can only mean he's trying to get a torpedo lock on me. You can see that his gun turrets aren't even pointing in my direction, and all the time he's doing this, he's not doing damage to me, and I'm doing damage to him. His guns open up again. This tells me he's just launched the torpedoes, so I slow down. I don't need to turn. All I have to do is slow down, and every one of those torpedoes misses. And he's dead, and I took almost no damage. That is what happens if you're in an American destroyer and you bring a torpedo to a gunfight. But wait a minute. Just when you thought Jingles had stopped making fun out of big stupid battleships... <laughs> <laughs> look at this guy. Just, just, just look at him. It's the Miyogi. I told you we'd see more of him later. Look at that. That poor guy in the wicks just died trying to defend this guy, and he's herp a derp a derp a derp, <laughs> firing into the island that he's about to run into because he's not even watching where he's going. And yep. Yeah, Oh look, there's a dest you knew the destroyer was here. How could he not know that I was here? Within five and a half kilometers of him. <laughs> I don't hate stupid battleship drivers. I love stupid battleship drivers. If it wasn't for stupid battleship drivers, I wouldn't have any fun at all in my destroyers. <laughs> look at this clown. I've seen bots that display better situational awareness than the guy driving this Miyogi. He just has absolutely no clue what's going on around him. Now, I do take a very, very big hit there, but that's from the Arkansas Beater. The Miyogi never touches me. The Arkansas Beater is not a particularly good ship. Those of you who think, oh, I wish I'd been a closed beta tester so I could have an Arkansas Beater. No, really, you don't. But it does have one outstanding feature. It does almost as much damage with its high explosive shells as it does with its own piercing. So it's it's one of those battleships where you can generally get away with firing nothing but high explosive. Particularly against little tin can destroyers like the Clemson. He took half of my health off with one hit. Meanwhile, our friend in the Miyogi still hasn't figured out what his rudder's for. <laughs> so... He's still just sailing backwards in a completely straight line, and he hasn't taken control of the flooding. He's still taking flooding damage, and now I've set him on fire, and he's burning as well, and... Well, that was pretty inevitable, wasn't it? Well, this particular fairy tale does have a happy ending, as our little gnome princess gets her wish, and does eventually get to wreak havoc on the enemy aircraft carriers, which was the whole point of coming around this side of the map in the first place. 
But going back to that battleship, I mean, the, the Wix class destroyer made one mistake and paid for it. He would have probably died anyway, but he could have done a lot more damage to me. And, and then the Arkansas beater might have been able to finish me off if the Wix had just used his guns instead of trying to play like a Japanese destroyer and torpedo me at short range. But the the Miyogi just, he, he didn't do a single thing right. And this is the whole point of me uploading these kind of video clips. It's not just to point and laugh at people who deserve to be pointed and laughed at because... <laughs> okay, that's probably 80 to 85% of the reason why I do it, because I am an evil known genius. I use my powers for evil, not for good. But at the same time, you know, we can learn from other people's mistakes and hopefully not repeat them ourselves. So what did he do wrong, other than everything? Well, it, it all pretty much boiled down to a complete and total lack of situational awareness. And there's no excuse for it in a battleship. Because you have so much time between firing your guns that, I mean, you can see me here. I'm zooming in and zooming out between shots in my Clemson. And I don't get a lot of time to do it in my Clemson because the guns fire so quickly. But I do it anyway. And I'm doing it to pay attention to what's going on around me. There's lots of enemy aircraft up there. I've just sank one of the carriers, but there's another enemy carrier around. So there are still dive bombers and torpedo bombers around. And I don't want to get hit by them because I wasn't paying attention. It's hard to do in a destroyer. It's easier to do in a cruiser, even though this cruiser isn't doing it. There we go, you got... <laughs> and again, it's not just the battleships. That guy in the Kuma did not turn until he saw the torpedoes in the water, at which point it was almost too late. And yeah, he's done as well. A battleship has got anything up to 30 seconds between firing its guns when he's got nothing better to do but pull the camera out, have a look around and see what's going on around him. If I can pull the camera back, have a quick look around me, maintain situational awareness, and still snap back onto the target in time to fire my guns again the second they're reloaded in a ship with guns that fire as fast as a Clemson-class destroyer, battleship drivers have absolutely no excuse. I don't want to come across as a battleship hater here. In fact, I do think battleships need a bit of a buff, and in fact, in patch 0.4.1, that's exactly what's happened. Battleships have received a buff to the accuracy of their main battery guns at close ranges, less than three kilometers, which is exactly where they needed it the most. But no amount of battleship buffs would have saved that Miyogi driver. You can't buff situational awareness. And I've been in these kind of situations myself driving battleships. It wasn't that long ago during the close beta where I posted a video in my Congo class battleship, where over 50 torpedoes were fired at me during the course of the battle. Only four of them hit, because I have mastered the dark art of turning the ship every now and then and paying attention to what's going on around me. I am not what anybody would describe as a pro gamer. In fact, it says it right there in the channel description. I am a noob gamer extraordinaire. But as long as people continue to display the kind of situational awareness of that guy in the Miyogi class battleship in this particular match, I will continue to do a hundred thousand damage <laughs> by basically shooting fish in a barrel um, in my Clemson Tier 4 American Destroyer. Please, by all means, everybody, not just the battleship drivers, continue focusing on nothing other than what is immediately down the barrel of your gun sight, and I will continue having games like this. Uh, you are quite literally putting food on my table and money in my pocket. Thank you. Do not ever change. Or alternatively, pay more attention to what's going on around you. I'll have to start working harder to get my kills. You will live longer and have more entertaining games. And we might get a bit more skill displayed in the videos that we see on YouTube, instead of me just shooting fish in the bottom of a barrel, the way that I pretty much did throughout the course of this entire video. You never know. I have a dream. Maybe one day things will get better. Until then, well, it's going to be more of the same. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, or at least been educated slightly by today's video. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.